My name's Gail Edwards and I'm directing one of the three Shakespeare's with the second year students in 2008. I'm directing the first one up, which is Pericles. And, well, Pericles goes on an enormous journey. It's a fairy story, it's a journey story. He's propelled into a journey on the sea which takes his entire life and he goes to various different countries. Tarsus, Tyre, Antioch, all these different places around the Mediterranean. And we decided not, why stop at the Mediterranean, why not the world? So our Pericles goes on a journey around the world um, to foreign shores, and some of them are mythical foreign shores, where he meets various different characters who participate in his story. Sometimes he's on the run, sometimes he falls in love, sometimes he's lost his love. Um, sometimes he's given up and then sometimes he finds hope. So it is a great epic adventure story. It's kind of like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, and it begins and it propels like a big dipper ride and it's not boring. It, um, it moves very fast, it's very filmic and the designers had to come up with a fabulous set that would work in 15 different countries and we had to come up with costumes that could change very quickly from one country to another because they're similar actors or the same actors doing each part. Well, I think it's a story about uh, humanity. Um, the reason why I wanted to do it is that it, it goes through one man's life. It travels over 20 years and um, it, it deals with issues of endurance and how we live our lives and what is right and what is wrong and how we handle grief and loss in our lives and how we uh, manage to survive all of, the, um, all of the things the fates deal out to us. In fact, Pericles talks about the fact that he is a small, tiny speck beneath the huge gods and that human beings are buffeted by the fates. And so what power do we have in our relationship with the gods or fate? who are we as individuals and what, what power do we have over our own destiny. Um, so the issues in the piece are really interesting. I think it'll feel like a spell. It's got sort of magic and mystery and beauty in it. So I think the piece works like a beautiful, mythical story at sea. Well, I have two fantastic student designers from NIDA and they have come up with a sensational set design, a huge raft that looks like a boat that turns around and becomes land and it swivels and does all sorts of exciting things. And, um, and the costumes are sort of influenced by Asia and India, but they're very colourful. And um, I think people will find it surprisingly modern, even though it's a classical play. And I think they'll feel like they're in very familiar territory, even though they won't know the play as well as, say, Hamlet or King Lear. I think that they'll really enjoy the story. Well, the, the skulls at the back are the very first scene of the play. We're set up for the first scene, which is an, um, in Antioch. And Pericles is a young, handsome prince who's come to woo a fair maid. She's um, exotic and very desirable, and there is a riddle that has to be solved by every prince who comes to get her hand in marriage. And of course, if you fail the riddle, you are killed and your head is put on a pike, like the ones behind me. And I'm not going to tell you the story, but it's a <laughs> riddle that he doesn't want to talk about once he works out what it means. I think one of the things about doing an audition using Shakespeare, uh, and I hope people will come and see the shows and listen to this when they see them, but it is getting right onto the language. It's not contemporary language. Um, they're not saying, do you want to go to the pictures? Um, they're saying, would you like to go to the pictures because... And, and they're big ideas. And so you really have to get the language forward in your mouth and be prepared to be very brave imaginatively and emotionally connecting to ideas. I ask them to go through and underline all the key words in every sentence. They're usually the strong stresses and I ask them to put a pencil line around the main words in every, in every verse line and stress them. Don't be afraid to stress them. As long as, of course, you filled them up with your truthful, imaginative response. Otherwise, it would just be an elocution lesson. Um, because, of course, you have to connect to what the character's about, what the character wants in this speech, what their aim is. And I always think with an audition piece, it's a good idea to look at where the piece starts 
and where it ends and what the journey in the middle is. I call the first point A, the last point Z or Z. And I always talk about looking at the journey through the speech because in any Shakespeare play, a character is never the same after a speech as they are before. They are changed and so are we. And that's the key to making those speeches really work. So if people come along, they can have a look at how successful we are in achieving that or not.